Hello and welcome to this week's edition of The Road Less Traveled with Gary L. and Gigi's Boo on RealLibertyMedia.com. Real Liberty Media Radio. Real Liberty Radio. <laughs> Hello, Gigi's Boo. <laughs> Hello, Gigi's Boo. Ah, how's everybody? Yeah, how is everybody? Nice. We're rolling right along here. Hopefully the sound's okay. We seem to have a challenge that way every week. I kind of played with it a little bit ahead of time, but we'll see. And we got a few folks over there in the chat room, Gigi's Boo. Yeah. So, some of the folks talking that I haven't seen talk a whole lot in the past. And we'll say hello to, of course, Grimnir. He's the the head, head man, facilitator, and webmaster, and all things good at reallibertymedia.com. If it weren't for him, none of this would be happening. Of course, they're over here in this IRC chat room. That one can join, if they like, go to reallibertymedia.com. About halfway down the front page there, you'll see a chat applet that you can you put your name in and jump in and say hello to everyone. And then there's Moose Girl and Kate, A-List, Asmo, Beth Z, Chelsea and Denise, Chloe, Frumpy, Graham, Gramsy Dork, okay? I be Don C, Java Doctor, JJ's here, Paul Bunyan, Trust No One, Vinny, Woodman, Behind a Woodshed, Bitcoin Bob, Dima, Flash Troid, Gigi's Boo, Yehova, Wanataco, Kozu, Mbite, Nelson Dubois, Nelson Dubois, sorry, North Forest, Pond Sauce, Rain, Robwork, Sock Puppet, Stats Bob, Tip Bob, Bill, and Phantom. Hey, so everyone in the chat room, well, we're hot again. Dang, man, what the heck? Okay. All right, all right, let's do that. See if that's better. So, what's Gigi's boo up to? Just sitting and a talking. Yeah? Talking to you. Had a little excitement this afternoon. Um, our Cocker Spaniel, mine and Gary's black Cocker Spaniel, mm -hmm. Atticus, he has always loved to go up to some neighbor's house who has a little pond in their yard, um, about four feet deep. And he he'll just jump. Well, today we saw him break loose, him and the mixed blood that we've got. Um, she watched how the gate worked, and she lifted the latch, and so they jailbroke. And here we went to get them, and they both hit the middle of the pond at the same time. And we have to really look because uh, there's there's koi fish in it, and I'm so afraid they're going to knock the fish out. So there I was in the ringing, ringing wet in the rain looking for fish, and they had climbed out and went over to Mr. and Ms. Mises, and uh, they, had get, they had given them a weenie apiece. Uh, that's Atticus's treat. I, I dare say that if he knocked the fish out and killed them, they wouldn't be mad at him. They love him so good. So that's what I did this afternoon, trying to get them in and to be quiet. And uh, so it's going to take a little bit to get them cleaned up, especially Allie, before I bring her in tonight. Okay, bring her in. I think uh, Hal said I'm okay. It's you that's on the yeah, hot side. Yeah, I'm looking at that. I pulled it back down again a little bit more, minus 3.1 decibel. And let's see if that does. not I did notice, um, well, I'm going to go get into that. Anyway, hopefully that's better. That still looks a little hot, doesn't it? I don't get it. Test, check, audio, one, two. All right, now I didn't, I didn't break a red light that time, so. Minus 4.4 .4 decibels. Let's save it right there again. And do that. Okay, Gigi's Boo seems fine. We, we already knew that, didn't we? Uh -huh. hmm. Canine Partners in Crime. That is... That is That's Sam. Bonnie and Clyde. That's who they are. Yeah. <laughs> That's all right, then. Okay, let's minimize that. So, what what all we got going on this week, Gigi's boo? We got lots going on. Um, 
Well, we're checking on all the flights and getting everything ready for Italy if things hold up for that. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Getting Bonnie and Clyde to Italy is going to be fun, too. Oh, gosh. I was just ready even thinking about having to do that. Yeah. Um, the, Atticus yeah. will go on as a uh, therapy dog. He can mm-hmm. ride. That, that and can, a kennel. Yeah. That and can, that he can, can do be that. Arranged. But now, <laughs> Allie, we go, you know, for we're trying to get Ada um, out of having to change flights. So we found a flight that's nonstop. We could sleep her or sedate her a little bit, mm-hmm. um, and uh, we'll probably be okay with her. But uh, Atticus is a therapy dog. Uh, sometimes he didn't act like it, but he is. Yeah. And he'll want to say hello to everyone on the airplane. Oh, God, up and down the airplane, <laughs> you got to walk. And he's got to make friends with everybody, and he's got to sniff and look and stands back and gives them the once over. I told him he was Inspector Gadget. We well, all we need to do is get him a, a, a coat, and he would be Inspector Gadget. I get him a pipe, and he could be uh, Sherlock Holmes. Yeah. Imagine, imagine them busting loose in Rome. All oh the, God, don't even say that. All the fountains in Rome, and oh my God, don't <laughs> say that. We'll never pay the fines. <laughs> They'd run from one fountain to the next and jump in. Ah, don't even go there, right? Okay, oh God, that's true. Yeah, okay, Gigi's boo. We, we got better get going on here. I said, well, see, we got. Uh, all kinds of alternative currency transactions going on. I shouldn't. I shouldn't say that though. They'll be over here monitoring the chat room, thinking. That. <laughs> oh, tell them to come on. Yeah. Monitor yeah. us. <laughs> yeah. Well, well, you know, here we go. We got a few items to cover. It seems. It seems that uh, Monsanto and. Um, yeah, St. Monsanto has just gotten into a little bit of a mess, at least as far as the media is concerned, the alternative media, the, or the new media, the real media, whatever you want to call it. But they tested, you know, an article from Healthy Holistic Living uh, that is actually undated. But anyway, they tested... Of of the one of the California wines that were tested, one hundred percent revealed the presence of glyphosate, and they say it's out of control, even affecting the grapes that are used to make organic wine. So, wind drift looms large here. Glyphosate, the active ingredient of Monsanto's Roundup herbicides, the most used agricultural chemical in history. It's used in a number of different herbicides, 700 in all, but Roundup is by far the most widely used. Since introduced in 1974, 1.8 million tons have been applied to U.S. fields, and two-thirds of that volume has been sprayed in the last 10 years. So let's see here. Two-thirds. Uh, that's 1.2 million tons. Ten years. One point two. Uh, that's a, what's that, 102,000 tons a year? Interesting. It is. A recent analysis shows that farmers sprayed enough glyphosate in 2014 to apply eight-tenths of a pound of the chemical to every acre of cultivated cropland in the United States, and nearly half a pound of glyphosate to all cropland worldwide. They tested ten wines. It's not a huge sampling, but of all the samples, they all tested positive for glyphosate, even the organic wines, although the levels were significantly lower. The highest level was 18.74 parts per billion, which was found in the 2013 Cabernet Sauvignon from a conventional vineyard. 
and is more than 28 times higher than other samples. The lowest, 0.659 points per billion, found in the 2013 SERA, which was produced in a biodynamic and organic vineyard. And it goes on to talk about how does it end up there. Well, I don't think there are too many, <laughs> too many ways other than water and air. Well, three ways in direct application. So take your pick. But if you're a beer drinker, you're not safe either. Study of the glyphosate residues in, in the Munich Environmental Institute also found glyphosate in the 14 best-selling German beers. Now, you know that they're flipped out about that. All the beers tested had glyphosate levels above the one mic, point one rather microgram limit allowed in drinking water. Point 0.1 microgram, wow. Levels ranged from a high of 29.74 micrograms per liter in a beer called Hus, uh, Husserator to a low of 0.46 micrograms per liter found in the beer Augustiner. Although no tests have yet been conducted on American beer, it's likely, you think, to be contaminated as well. I w wow. I, I can't even imagine them allowing those tests. That would be, whew, that would be amazing. Anyway, interesting article. goes on to talk about um, the potential of cancer related to glyphosate and other health concerns and some of the other uh, things. even gives you a little idea of how to avoid it in your food, which we'll actually talk a little bit about later on. So here's an article you can, actually it's pretty comprehensive, so you might get something out of that one. Now, on that note, last week we talked about a lawsuit involving glyphosate. Well, here's another one that popped up, May 19, 2017, same website about lawsuits.com. According to allegations raised in a product liability lawsuit filed this week, two separate women from Oklahoma claim that they developed large B-cell lymphoma from Roundup, alleging that Monsanto failed to adequately warn about the risks associated with exposure to the popular glyphosate-based weed killer. A joint complaint was filed in the U.S. District Court for Western Oklahoma on May 15th on behalf of Esperelda Hernandez, Wanda Clark, and Clark's husband, Donald Shepard, indicating that both women developed the form of non-Hodgkin's lymphoma due to side effects of long-term Roundup exposure. So there's another one in the news. Drop that in the chat room. Isn't this, isn't this fun? So many ways to kill people. What an amazing little operation they got going on. Oh, hey, it gets even better. In a Sustainable Pulse article from May 19th also, U.S. court documents show that Monsanto manager led a cancer cover-up for glyphosate and PCBs. The same manager, Dr. George Levins Levins Le Levin Levinis ah, Levinskus, <laughs> Dr. George Levinskus, who helped hide the carcinogenic potential of PCBs in the 70s, has now been shown in California court documents released Tuesday to have also influenced the EPA regarding the carcinogenic potential of the world's most used herbicide, glyphosate, and this was back in the 80s. In March, on, in March 2015, Sustainable Pulse uncovered a 30-year cover-up by Monsanto and the EPA related to the probable carcinogency, carcinogist, carcin, carcinogenicity, why? Can't talk today. Of the world's most used herbicide, glyphosate. This cover-up has now been confirmed by court documents released by the district court in San Francisco. U.S. Right to Know reported Wednesday, get this, 
excuse me, whew, that more than 50 lawsuits against Monsanto are pending in U.S. District Court in San Francisco. Just a, that's just one district filed by people alleging that exposure to Roundup caused them or their loved ones to develop non-Hodgkin lymphoma and that Monsanto covered it up. There is a link for the documents released. There is a link for a WHO, not the rock band, as Hal says, and his show, 3 to 5, Behind the Woodshed, on Sunday. He calls it not the rock band, but the World Health Organization, International Agency for Research on Cancer. There's a link for that document. I also discovered... EPA documents from 91 showing how Monsanto funded long-term glyphosate safety on mice. Which suggested carcinogenic potential, according to the EPA experts, was, quote, reviewed again until it mysteriously showed no carcinogenic potential. <laughs> Boy, this is a good one here. <laughs> All this, and they continue to pump it out. Because they want to kill you. Here's another one. Monsanto again. We're just beating up on Monsanto tonight, Jesus. But That's all right. In Healthy Holistic Living, article... Mm. undated however the lead line is similar to the fluoride in your water the bt toxin in your gm corn is toxic and poisonous there were never any longitudinal studies on any gmo products except for the guinea pigs who consume this toxic garbage on a daily basis you find BT corn in many products such as cereal, corn chips, anything that contain high fructose corn syrup such as soda, juices, bread, yogurt, not all yogurts, but many of them, salad dressing, most candy, gum, and even some nutritional bars. All right, I have to make another adjustment here. All right, let's pull her there. Okay. By Mike Barrett, is GMO corn nutritionally equivalent to non-GMO corn? Ha, huh. Monsanto will tell you, well, of course it is, but the real answer is absolutely not. And the simple reality is that they are continuing to get away with their blatant disinformation. In fact, in 2012, a nutritional analysis of genetically modified corn found that not only is GM corn lacking in vitamins and nutrients when compared to non-GM corn, but the genetic creation also poses numerous health risks due to extreme toxicity. The 2012 report entitled Nutritional Analysis Comparison of GMO Corn versus Non-GMO Corn found numerous concerning and notable differences between GMO and non-GMO corn, none of which are particularly surprising. First, the report found that non-GMO corn has considerably more calcium, magnesium, manganese, potassium, iron, and zinc. And it goes on to list the details of that. They also found it to be highly toxic, which I think we probably already knew that. While non-GMO corn was found to be free of chlorides, formaldehyde, glyphosate, and other substances, GMO corn was riddled with these toxins. And it goes on to talk about limits. Similarly, GMO corn contains concerning levels of toxic formaldehyde at 200 parts per million. Dr. John Hubert, a respected expert on GMOs, stated that at least one study found that 0.97 parts per million of ingested formaldehyde was toxic to animals. The GMO corn was found to contain 200 times more formaldehyde than this maximum safety limit. And the article talks about being caught, or Monsanto being caught lying again. Imagine that. 
there is a video here of some gentlemen speaking to BT toxins, a commentary of sorts, and some comments in there. So we'll drop that in the in the chat room as well. Let's see, did we get that last one? Now, all is not lost. Here is a printable list of Monsanto-owned food producers provided by Anonymous Headquarters May 26th, a year ago. Okay. And it's a here's a nice list that if you like to print it out, you can. It also goes into some of the government ties that Monsanto has, such as uh, a former congressman as consultants and senators as legal counsels and White House senior staff people as director of international government affairs. And it's quite a list. You'll find it interesting. It's actually quite a quite a collection of things here. So, I'll just go ahead and stick that in the chat room for those who have an interest in such matters, like staying alive. Oh, no, not more Gigi's Boo. What do you think about all this so far? I mean, I may have, uh, wow, there's so much GMO, so much GMO information that came out this week. Mm-hmm. What 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 are your views on this while I take take a breath? Well, oh, I'll tell you one thing. I think it's been going on a long time. You know, I think they've slowly been poisonous, and I think the human body is a wonderful thing because it can um, ward off a lot of it, but in great quantities, I guess it does kill. Um, very sad to me that people would do that to us. You know. And all in the name of making things better for us. Another genocide. Mm -hmm. That's all you say. It's just another genocide. And Mm -hmm. it's really a sad situation to me. Yeah, the people who don't believe that there's an an ongoing population control system going or or, or program going on, they're really not paying attention, I don't think. What about all the dust? Dust in a farm. Now, that if you've been around a farm much, you know that uh, dust is a is ever present, especially around the, the barns and things like that. They did a study on that, though, and um, it's by Howard Vlieger of the Farm and Ranch Freedom Alliance Board of Directors. Um, don't see a date. So we'll just go with it as it is. Oh, here it is, uh, May, May 19th. In addition to the considerable questions about the safety of GMOs and their effects on mammals, what about other potential side effects? What about dust? That's a common factor that all of us in crop production must deal with, whether it comes from a country road or a combine harvesting a crop. Dust is present in many places in rural America. A crop farmer in northern Iowa had some keen observations in regard to dust and decided to do some testing. This gentleman, who we'll call John, noticed a significant amount of dust in the hog building where he custom feeds hogs. John gathered a sample of the dust and placed it in a Ziploc bag and identified it as hog dust. He noticed an unusually large amount of dust around the combine when harvesting was in progress in his brother's Liberty Link cornfield. Liberty is an herbicide with the active ingredient of uh, glufosinate, (laughs) which is a non-selective herbicide similar to Roundup. Roundup contains glyphosate as the active ingredient, as we know. John collected a sample of the dust from the combine and placed it in a Ziploc bag and labeled it. He also noticed a large amount of dust around the combine uh, during harvest of his father's Roundup-ready cornfield. So he collected a dust sample from the combine and placed it in a Ziploc bag and labeled it. 
Then he sent them all to the Midwest Labs and had a mold count and identification test, test done on the samples. Here we go, the results. The hog dust, Liberty Link corn dust, and Roundup Ready corn dust total mold count of 14,000 CFU slash per gram. I'm not sure what the CFU is. I'll let you guys figure that out. 7,200,000 CFU per gram and 15,600,000 CFU per gram. Aspergillus, 10,000. CFU per gram, 7 million CFU per gram, and 15,600,000. Penicillin, 3,000, 2,000, and 200,000, rather, and not re- not reported. It goes on to talk about the discussions that took place after afterward. It says, since learning of the problem associated with GMO crops, I heard numerous stories from different people in production agriculture about respiratory problems that seem connected with grain dust. And it goes on to talk about that as it relates to soybeans and corn at local elevators. Another farmer said that his brother came down with pneumonia after cleaning out his grain bin, which contained Roundup Ready corn. Another side effect of the GMO Roundup Ready crops is that certain chemical companies have taken away our rights as biological or organic crop farmers. What do you think? <laughs> Hal was talking about that on, actually on his show earlier. The wind spreads the toxic dust from the neighboring fields onto the fields of those who care to make the extra effort to raise a healthier, more nutritious crop. Even though we grow only biologically produced non-GMO crops on our farm, we have gotten in the habit of always wearing a dust mask. We are handling grain. And then they say, well, it could all be coincidence, but it does make you wonder. Okay. Coming at you from all directions, huh? Right, GG? Exactly. Exactly. Anything you do. Yeah. Man. There, there is actually some good news somewhere down the line here. <laughs> but it seems like there's a whole lot popping this week. This, this story is uh, back from March 1998. Certainly things are different now, right? What do you think? Well, let's find out. Under the guise of recycling, millions of pounds of toxic waste are shipped each year from polluting industries to fertilizer manufacturers and farmers who use toxic waste laden with dioxin, lead, mercury, and other hazardous chemicals as raw material for fertilizers that were applied to U.S. farmlands. According to an analysis of federal and state data released today, by the Environmental Working Group, there again, we're talking March 1998, between 1990 and 1995, more than 450 fertilizer companies or farms in 38 states received shipments of toxic waste totally more than 270 million pounds. In a series of investigative articles, the Seattle Times has documented the nationwide use of cadmium lead, arsenic, dioxins, radionucleotides, and other hazardous waste and fertilizer. Tests by the state of Washington found that some fertilizers contained very high levels of dioxin, 100 times higher than the level allowed for treated Superfund sites in the state. According to this, and it might be worth checking up on, In response to that investigation, states are scrambling to plug regulatory loopholes. Washington State, California, Idaho, New Jersey, North Dakota, Maryland, Oklahoma, Oregon, and Texas have laws or regulations in the works to limit toxic waste and fertilizer. 
Most of the proposals would still not provide consumers with as much information or put the burden on fertilizer companies to prove that their products are safe. So, if you want to have some fun, don't have anything else to do, you could check up on that and see if anything really ever happened. Somehow, I'm guessing no. What do you think, Gigi's boo? Oh, I gotta agree with you on that. Yeah, I, I mean, I would be shocked, put it that way, if anything significant came out of that. But it's in an interesting, an interesting op-ed in the Washington Post of all things. This one really, I found curious. It's an uh, it's an opinion piece. A once all powerful corporation is suddenly politically toxic in Virginia. And there's the gentleman writing this is the director of the Chesapeake Climate Action Network, and it talks about six sixty more than sixty candidates for Virginia House of Delegates have rejected campaign contributions from fossil fuel giant Dominion Energy. Well, right off the top, I can tell you when I fra- when I framed it that way. Fossil fuel giant. Now we're talking, this is a, a very green directed opinion piece, all right? Because they're, they're putting, putting these little buzzwords in there. So bear that in mind. Two candidates for governor, a Democrat, and a Republican have, a Republican have two rejected contributions. And they're saying it's the equivalent of an earthquake. And they they pose the question, what's happening to Dominion Dominion Energy, the once all powerful corporation that has owned Richmond for de- deta- for decades? To understand, all you have to do is visualize Roberts Mountain, Roberts Mountain in Nelson County, nestled in the heart of the Blue Ridge Range of Central Virginia. They paint a real pretty picture there, don't they? Uh-huh. Federal regulars have revealed that Dominion intends to remove the tops of mountains, including Roberts Mountain, to build a pipeline for gas from hydraulic fracturing. Indeed, using publicly available documents, opponents of the pipeline have shown that the summit of, Ro- summit of Roberts Mountain could be reduced by 60 feet, literally exploded away. And they go on to say that that's just the beginning for the plans for the Atlantic Coast Pipeline for fracked gas, terming it as a gas superhighway that is supported by uh, the Virginia Governor Terry McAuliffe. He goes on to talk about all that. I'm not sure what to make of that uh, piece out of the Washington Post. What do you think? What do you think they're driving at there, Gigi? What? I don't have any idea. I don't either. I, I mean, Washpo is not my favorite source, and they're as with most mainstream media, they're very agenda laden. So I'm not really sure I understand completely what what they're what they're going for here. That's you guys. Might be able to figure it out. Okay, Boo Boo Bear. Let's have some. Let's have some fun. That's enough All bad right. stuff. I feel. I feel like I have an anvil hanging around my neck. <laughs> so do I. So get off that. <laughs> mm. Wow. Okay. How about toothpaste? Hey, let's have some fun with toothpaste. Toothpaste. There are lots of ways you can use toothpaste other than than br- brushing your choppers. Yeah. There are 15 unexpected ways how you can use it around the house. If you want to shine silver, toothpaste works. Put it, you know, use your toothbrush. You can shine silver with it. You can clean your head, car headlights. I know there's, there's several ways actually to do that. Toothpaste is one way. You know, the... Uh, uh, the buckets, you know, over your headlights, so they get, uh, at least the older ones, uh, the, the ultraviolet light kind of causes it to haze over. 
Uh-huh. The uh, you can use toothpaste to clean that. You can actually um, there's a what's the name of that bug spray? Uh, off, I think it is. That will actually yeah yeah uh huh. That'll actually clean them. But the, I know the toothpaste works. I've used that. It works well. Just put toothpaste on a on a rag and polish up your headlight uh, lenses there. Uh oh, for you guys that wear wearing makeup now because you're not sure what your gender is, <coughs> you can clean up the makeup on your countertops with a small dab of toothpaste. It'll help make it disappear in no time. And for those who wear those kids, you're still knocking around in kids on your feet. For those who don't know what those are, those are like Nike tennis shoes. You know the the white rubber around the around the edge of the of the of the shoe. You can use toothpaste uh-huh. to clean that. It cleans it up nicely. Oh no! You know how you you like if you chop up garlic and you deal with it and you get all over your fingers. Jesus, boo! Probably probably true with with onion too. But you can take some toothpaste and basically wash your fingers with it and that will help remove the strong odors i tell you what mother does what's that she takes her hands and runs it over the uh faucet the metal part of the faucet Mm -hmm. and in the kitchen sink and it it gets rid of it Hmm. that's interesting i don't know why but it is don't know if you have some stains on any wooden surfaces you can use toothpaste to help work them out oh and that nasty face plate on an iron especially if you use starch uh, it gets all dark and yucky well the toothpaste works for that too you can clean the face of your iron permanent markers i actually i saw another article about permanent markers but this one talks about toothpaste mm. being effective to get rid of permanent marker stains especially on wood but I also saw an article, it's not on this piece, but just recently, where you can take uh, a highlighter, which is non-permanent, right? And you can take a highlighter and rub it on the permanent stain, and that will help break the permanent stain loose. I guess that's logical, huh? Mm-hmm. I guess you could do two things. You use the highlighter and then clean it all up with toothpaste. Your old coffee mug. You ever seen that coffee mug that hasn't been washed in six months? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Got the old coffee stains on it. Well, the, the old toothpaste will, will help take that off, too. Stains on clothes. If you have lipstick, tomato sauce, even grass stain, you can rub some toothpaste on the stain, let it sit for a little while, and then wash it off. Just make sure that you do not use whitening toothpaste because that can bleach bleach your clothes and Hal was right he was ahead of the head of the program here you can use it on zits to have your pimple with a little bit of toothpaste and leave it overnight it will dry up what about your fingernails you know your fingernails can get all yucky you can put toothpaste and leave it on for a few minutes before washing it off. And it'll clean your nails of any stains and dirt. For you piano players out there, you can clean your keyboards, make them nice and and shiny again. This says you can treat bruises with it. That's an interesting thought. Mix a bit of toothpaste and lotion together and rub it on your bruise before bed to have it heal quicker. Interesting thought. Never occurred to me smooth out your cell phone screen well i don't know how many people brave enough to try that (laughs) put toothpaste on a cloth and rub it over your phone screen it will smooth out any scuffs Ooh, i'd be a little hesitant to try that what about you juju yep me too you might end up with a foggy plastic screen i don't i don't know Uh, but that could be interesting all right, some more fun things. I'm not going, not definitely not going to read all these, but there are 30 things 
they're going to talk about that you didn't realize what they were actually supposed to be used for. And it talks about the things in life, some little things in life actually have some pretty useful tricks behind them that can significantly help us live much easier lives. This one's neat because I have one of these. Now, but and it's you know those spaghetti spoons, Gigi's boo got the yeah, they got the the I don't know what you call them, like the claws on them. Yeah, it's, it's yeah. got a hole in the in the bottom of the spoon part. Well, that hole in the bottom of the spoon part is actually a measuring device. You can measure one serving of spaghetti through that hole. Well, you know about that. I never realized that. Did you? Nope. And what about that? You know, ever, I don't. I don't buy new clothes anymore. I mean, it's been a long time. But for those of you who buy new clothes, like suits, I guess, you know that little. You get a button sometimes, an extra button, and a piece of fabric in a bag that's in the pocket. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah. Well, you wonder what that piece of fabric is for, but it's actually. It's a piece of fabric that is designed to be used as a test piece for your in your laundry machine to make sure that nothing crazy happens when uh, you wash the the fabric. I it's, never knew that. I I didn't either. I thought that was pretty neat. And Grimner says you can do all that with baking soda paste. Yeah, well, actually, I think a prime ingredient in toothpaste is baking soda. Um, so yeah, I think I think he's right. But yeah, you you can test test the uh, how solid your your uh, fabric is. Okay, I skip that one. That was pretty obvious. Yeah, this was fun. You know, you know, Gigi's you see these these uh, toboggans that you put on your head. They got the little pom pom on top. Yeah, yeah. Do you ever wonder what those pom poms are for? There is actually no. a reason for that. What is it? Back in the 18th century, French Marines used to used to wear them for protection against the low ceilings of ship cabins. They were also used in uniforms for soldiers to help distinguish the branch of military a soldier was in. <clears throat> Did you know that? I didn't. I thought that was kind of a cute story. Oh, everybody, you know, well, at least not everybody. People I used to hear talk about it. You ever seen, like, especially the bottom of, a bottle, bottom of a champagne bottle? It has that big dimple in the bottom. Uh-huh. A lot of people say that's how they cheat you out of a little bit of product. But really, it has a functional reason, and it's called a punt and it's there to help prevent the bottles from tipping over. It also helps chill the product faster, making the bottle more resistant to high pressure and easier to hold and pour. So they're not... And maybe they rip you off a little bit at the same time, but that isn't the only reason why they do it anyway. Okay. Uh, let's skip that. I'll leave some of these things you guys to look at. Yeah, the dimples and golf balls. You know what those are for, right, Gigi Spoo? Mm, I just thought it made them to look better. Um, it actually reduces their wind drag, which is interesting. You always you ever wondered why the majority of doorknobs are made out of brass? I know Hal knows the answer to this. Because brass surfaces can prevent bacteria from accumulating. Brass kills bacteria and essentially makes doorknobs germ-proof, which is ideal when they, since they receive so many different hands. What do you know about that, Gigi's boot? Now, why, you know, you hear about them long neck beer bottles, and you buy in a honky. Oh yeah, them's in all them country songs talking about fights. You go with them honky tonks. You got them long neck beer bottles. There's a reason they have long necks, other than making a nice handle. <laughs> Yeah, a person's hand naturally carries heat. So when it touches a beer bottle, the heat transfers to the bottle. This is why beer, our beer bottles elongate the neck portion so that the beer drinker can have something to hold while keeping the beverage cool longer. 
and you can always bonk somebody in the head. And I don't know about this. I, I couldn't remember. Do you remember, you know, the, the the Bic pens that, like, you buy a whole bag of them and each one has this little plastic cap on top of it? Yeah. Have you ever noticed that there's a hole in the top of the cap? Not really. I hadn't either, but anyway, apparently at least some to, some types do. And it the fact this might be something new, and it could be from a product liability suit, but now, at least, there's a hole in the cap that's there to lower the risk of suffocation if a small child swallows the cap. Hmm. What do you know? Who to thunk it? Oh, yeah. Here's a good I, not, I Actually, this was kind of a surprise to me when I, a long time ago when I first read it. But, you know, on a, on a gas gauge on your car... It's got the picture of the, of the gas pump and all that, right? Yeah. And there's an arrow that points either to the right or to the left. You know what that arrow does, what it's for? That tells you which side of the car that the gas cap is on. Well. You know how how crazy it is sometimes you pull up and pull up to the wrong side of the gas pump driving a car that maybe you're not familiar with? Yeah, and I'm one of those dumb blondes except i'm not dumb that i'll pull up turn right around go back the same way (laughs) go around the circle (laughs) yeah i've done it too but yeah you can look down at your gas gauge and there's an arrow that's pointing to the side that has the gas so if you're ever not sure you have a point of reference there and uh, a lot of these are kind of bobby pins Gigi's boot probably knows this You know what the purpose of the grooved side of a bobby pin is? Yeah, for you to grip onto it better. All right. The grooves help the hair pin hold the hair better, too, which means the groove part should face toward the scalp. And it's never done that way. <laughs> well, that's what, <laughs> that's what the groove part's always on the top. Yeah, but they, they say it was designed to be too close to the head. I don't know. How about I don't you know I don't think anybody here drinks those nasty canned soft drinks. Not me. I'm sure nobody does. But in case somebody listens that does, if you ever notice a little pop top, you know where you you pop it and then it stays attached and all that, and it has a hole in the in the at the end of the tab. That mm-hmm. hole is there for a purpose. And the purpose is that you can hold your straw in it. You you can slide your straw into that hole and hold it in place so it doesn't wander around the can hole. What do you know about that, huh? Oh, yeah. I think we've talked about this before in another show. But, you know, there's anybody who still uses aluminum foil, aluminum foil, on each end of the box is a uh, little cut out uh, square like cut out that you can press in and it will actually hold the tube in place that way it doesn't jump out of the box when you pull the you ever had that experience when you pull it it's the same true on plastic wrap too uh, you pull it and the whole roll pops out of the box well this prevents it from doing so you press the Press the end pieces in and locks in the locks the tube in. Oh yeah, here's the here's the last one. Um, Chinese food, you know the takeout containers, GD spoon. Yeah, the ones that have the little handles and on them and all that. Now, what you can do with those, in addition to you know, like sitting in the car and eating out of the box, if you take it home, you can actually unfold the box and lay it out, and it becomes a plate. Just take the little handle out and unfold the whole box and just lay it out flat. There you are. There's your Chinese food on a handy-dandy plate. Never knew that either. Saves you from having to wash dishes. Hey, who likes to go to Goodwill? You like to go to Goodwill, don't you, Jesus? Oh, I love Goodwill, yeah. yeah. 
Well, you know, there are prepper items you can find at Goodwill. And I'm, I'm, sure, Salva- I'm sure Salvation Army stores as well. Uh, so I'm a little more um, favorable to Salvation Army than I am to Goodwill. But in any case, you can find, sometimes you can find wool blankets there that people have gotten rid of. And you can find a variety of hand tools, which are always handy at these places. Sometimes people well, put, put in there things like kitchen items like uh, manual can openers and meat grinders and manual blenders and all those sorts of things. You find, sometimes find camping supplies also. Now, I, it's been a long time since I've found a cast iron pan in a... You won't find them. Yeah, I mean, there's... They're pretty hard to find. Actually, where I find those are antique stores. You know, it's a lot of times they got piles and piles of them that you can work a deal on. Uh, mylar blankets. Sometimes people get those in, as a giveaway and they just toss them into Goodwill. Hunting gear, such as clothing, boots, and things like that, can sometimes be found. Lots and lots of books. That's one reason I don't like the store here. They have, oh, golly, like eight full-size shelves of hardback books that people donate books. And they're like $3 a piece, no matter what. And you can find every kind of conceivable book, just dig around in their stacks. They actually keep it pretty well organized, Um, kind of like a library in a way. So it's really, it's worth, if you like books, and especially looking for technical technical books, college-level books and things that, that people get rid of, uh, yeah, you can find some good stuff there. Okay, let's go ahead and throw that in, because I think you get the idea. Yeah, go by the Salvation Army, check out the things in there, and you, know, you never know what you're going to find. Here's one that many people, I think, struggle with at least once in a lifetime. And that's how to start your own business. That's gotten to be kind of a, it's gotten more and more difficult over time because this reality that we're in right now is not friendly to people, especially bootstrappers. But here's an article that talks about 10 steps to consider starting your own business and it just goes through the different uh, different aspects of it and i think it's well worth the read for anyone who's interested in that especially someone who's interested in maybe starting a part-time business it's well worth the well worth a look so let's finish up this on a really positive note gg's boo <laughs> Harvard University did a 75-year study looking for what factors lead to a fulfilling life. And here are, some of, here are just some of the things that they came out with. It's the longest longitudinal study ever conducted. According to Robert Waldinger, director of the Harvard Study of Adult Development, one thing surpasses all the rest. The clearest message that we get from the 75-year study is good relationships keep us happier and healthy, healthier, period. It isn't how much money you have or how many conferences you spoke at or keynoted or how many blog posts you wrote or how many followers you had or how many tech companies you worked for or how much power you wielded or how much you vested in each at each. No, the biggest predictor of your happiness and fulfillment overall is basically love. Specifically, the study demonstrates that having someone to rely on helps your nervous system relax, helps your brain stay healthier for longer, and reduces both emotional as well as physical pain. The data is also very clear that those who feel lonely or are more likely to see their physical health decline earlier and die younger. 
It's not just the number of friends you have and not whether you're in a committed relationship. It's the quality of your close relationships that matter. Exactly. According to George Valiant, the Harvard psychiatrist who directed the study from 1972 to 2004, there are two foundational elements. One is love. The other is finding a way of coping with life that does not push love away. So the next time you're scrolling through Facebook, instead of being present at the table with your significant other, or you're considering staying late at the office instead of getting together with your close friend, or you catch yourself working on a Saturday instead of going to the farmer's market with your sister, consider making a different choice. Relationships are messy, they're complicated, but the good life is built with good relationships. Our time is up, Gigi's boo. Any so soon. Cl- any closing thoughts? Nothing but what I usually say. I always take the road less traveled. And I love you all big to my heart. Yep. Thanks so much for joining us this week. And we look forward to seeing you again next week on The Road Less Traveled. Gary Owen, Gigi's Boo. So until then, take care. <laughs>